all right hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you more than 200 people killed in Sri Lanka and if you open your TV station they spoke about it as if there is 200 chickens they die it did not even take long the same as the weather news when a criminal he attacked a mosque in New Zealand the Prime Minister of New Zealand the Prime Minister of England the president the Prime Minister of Australia I mean the whole world is a crime and even they played for them the Adan in the Friday in all radio stations in New Zealand not a single Islamic TV station is sorry for what happened in Sri Lanka are they going to play our Bible for the Easter in Islamic countries to so to show their support they will not dare to do so coward and liars Western countries they always cover for Islam nobody want to go and say the problem is not the terrorist the problem is Islam why we have Islamic terrorism because of Islam nobody want to say the truth and there's many liars around us there is a Pope who is a liar and notice here we are not talking about the Catholic we are talking about this Pope this Pope is nothing but a liar he said and I quote him here it is not right to call Islam a terrorist faith so what is right mr. Pope to call Islam what you are a liar and you work for the devil you don't work for Jesus <clears throat> what you will say for 207 Catholic Christians killed today in Sri Lanka you will say to them it is not right to call Islam a terrorist faith there's a Pope was before him <clears throat> he was honest man and he said and I quote show me just what Muhammad brought that was in you and there is you and there you will find things only evil and inhuman such as his command to spread by the sword the faith he preached So here we show on you two Pope. One he is saying the truth, and the other one he is a hypocrite. And be careful, don't attack the Catholic. You see, one of the beautiful things here today happened, even though it's a sad day, that today all of us we are united behind the Christians who they are Catholic in Sri Lanka when we saw our brothers and sisters being slaughtered we did not remember what the church they go to we remember that those are Christians and not only we have liars between the Catholic Church leaders we have liars between the Protestant leaders like this certified liar his name is Muhammad James White this person he will not hesitate to defend Islam in every way he can to Christian who says yes that is Islam as a whole is lying 
the one who say Islam is ISIS as a whole is lying this is what this guy who is from the Protestant Church he said so we have the Pope from the Catholic Church certified liar we have a Christian minister very well known dr. James White who is a certified satanic liar but we have many good men say the truth this is a Catholic priest he said that the one who defend Islam is the betraying the truth and he's speaking against from the Catholic Church Catholic leaders who defend Islam are betraying the truth Catholic priest defend the Protestant pastor for on a trial for calling Islam satanic imagine we live in a time where if you call Islamic satanic you go to jail well Islam is satanic and take me to jail Those good men who speak the truth, we should stand behind them and never leave them alone. If Islam is satanic, why today and every day hundreds of people get killed? A British woman, she, could, she was killed in Nigeria. Three others were kidnapped. Attack in Saudi Arabia. Attack in Sri Lanka. Attack in Syria. Attack in I mean, in name a place, don't have an attack run by Allah business. We as a Christians, we should not tolerate saying the truth. Yes, we are peaceful. Yes, we are against hate. Yes, we are against violence, but we are against lies. So to be a Christian is not by just being a peaceful person, is by being truthful. If you cannot be truthful, then don't ever say you are a Christian. The title of our videos is the Antichrist. Is Islam as an Antichrist? There is no doubt. That Islam is Antichrist and the verse in the front of you. Whoever, who is the liar? Who is the liar? The liar is he who denieth that Jesus is the Christ and he is an Antichrist that he denied the Father and the Son. Why this? Uh, those filthy leaders who claim to be Christian don't go and say well Islam is an Antichrist and there's no question about that you don't even dare to quote the Bible these days because you're a bunch of potatoes politically correct people Islam not only Antichrist Islam anti-human as the previous Pope he said he said show me one thing was a human about Muhammad kidding attacking teaching hate promising people versions if they die for his sake so my friend if you look at the title of my video it says is Islam an Antichrist cult so today we have two topic in one dish Antichrist and cult now what is a cult can somebody help me to give me definition for a cult what is a something considered to be cult you will notice if you study cults that all cult leaders 
they share the same thing. All of them. What they share. All of them, they like to have sex with their followers. All of them, go and do your own study. You will not find not even a single one of them. He don't give himself a privilege about having sex with his followers. And this is exactly what Muhammad did. He made verses in the Quran saying, any Muslim woman she want to give herself to the Prophet so he can if her. The Muslim says to marry her. Why a Muslim she want to give herself to the Prophet anyway? The man already have 13 wives. Why Allah need to make a verse says any woman she want to give herself? What is that for? What does this have to do with God? All cult leaders, they share same interest. Money, sex, power, which means control. And Muhammad is one of them. And he is one of the most dangerous cult leaders. You do not need to be a genius to know that cult leaders, they don't serve God. They serve their pleasure. You don't have to, to, you don't have to be smart to know or educated to know that if somebody, he claimed to be a prophet, yet he want to sleep with your wife, obviously he is not a prophet. The wife of Muhammad, she was very young, but she is not a fool. She knew that Muhammad is a false cult leader. And this is why she said, I see that your Lord, he rush into your desire, Muhammad. What desire she is talking about? Women. I feel jealous of women who offer themselves to Allah Messenger. I mean, women offering themselves to Allah Messenger? Now, imagine this, just for the sake of education. Imagine I am Muhammad. And now, in my present, there is many, many Muslim women are listening. And then I say, hey, who is the women, the good women, who want to give themselves to me I mean isn't it that fantastic and the clear proof that I am NOT a cult leader women offering themselves to the Prophet for what and how and why women they come in line and say hey I want to sleep with you because you're a prophet so if you are a prophet, you have a privilege, and the privilege is your penis should be happy. Have you ever heard of such a stupid thing unless he is a cult leader? God in the seven galaxy, seven heaven eleven, he is making a verse saying, Hey Muhammad. I have a good news for you. Any Muslim woman, she want to sleep with you, she can offer herself, okay? You do not need to do anything. She come to your door, she knock at your door, and she take off her panty. Are you happy now? Isn't this clear that Muhammad is a cult leader?
I want to show you something in the Quran. I mean the Yellow Pages book. <clears throat> In the Yellow Pages book, Muhammad, he said, trying to copy the Bible. Follow those who ask you no wages. Who ask you what? No wages. Who is the one who's talking here? Anyone knows? Who is supposed to speak in here? Who knows? This is chapter 36, verse number 21. Who is the one is talking here? According to Muhammad, those are the disciples of Jesus. And no wonder they are saying, follow those who ask you for no wages. Not obey, by the way. This is stupid translation. It doesn't say obey. It says, follow those who ask you no wages. Let us change the translation of this donkey. Whoever he is. I mean, we cannot find one donkey. Donkey, he knew what how to translate. Obey. Here we go. We change the translation. The Quran changed. Just change the Abdul. Change the Abdul. Allah changed himself. That's it. The, the word of Allah changed by changing the Abdul. Follow those who ask you no fee, no wages. What fee, you idiot? Supposedly now we, we, we fix it. It's okay. We got it. Okay, wages. So ask you, I follow those who ask you no wages, no return. So why Muhammad asking your women to sleep with you? Why Muhammad he making verses that the fifth from every attack is for me and not only the fifth from every attack is for me the best of the attack cult leaders all of them they share the same thing they love money and they love sex with your wife in the interpretation of al qurtubi Ibn al-Arabi, he said, and one of the huge Islamic scholars, he said, one of the privilege of the Prophet that if he saw a woman, which means he liked her, her husband must divorce her immediately so the Prophet can F her. A privilege. It's a privilege for the Prophet. I mean, don't a prophet deserve a privilege? We just showed you a verse on the Quran saying, follow those who ask you no wages. And look at the list. Muhammad, he made this special privilege for just for him. And this is only for thee. Privilege for thee. Do you see it? Privilege. A prophet, he have a privilege and the privilege given to him by God about his penis. His holy penis, sorry. It must be a holy penis. Otherwise, why his penis should be treated differently from other penises? Uh, we have a Muslim saying, CP, don't lie. Why am I lying? The verse in the front of you. I mean, look at the Abdul. I show them the verse. I show them the reference. We are reading the word. It says a privilege for you only. And he says to me, don't lie. Can you believe it? 
a sexual privilege for the penis of Muhammad. If you cannot see that this is nothing but a cult leader, I don't know what to do to you. A privilege. This is only a privilege. All those women, they can sleep with the Prophet, and this is a privilege only for the Prophet. Any believing women, she come to the Prophet and she say, Hey, Prophet, take me. And it is a privilege. Question. Why Allah gave Muhammad the privilege about his penis? Any Muslim? Allah tell freedom to marry carefully a woman a choice but you misunderstand look at this donkey uh, sorry I take the word donkey back because donkeys they might be insulted by calling you a donkey was Aisha married to the Prophet by the freedom she is six years old hmm Your mother she grabbed her from the swing and she gave it to the prophet are you there mr. camel Aisha she was free to marry the prophet a child at the age of six and she was playing with her dolls hello And here you see other side of cult leaders. They are not only they seek benefit, sexual benefit from women, they even they go far and they are a child molesters. What is the interest of a man at the age of 54 with a girl at the age of six? What he saw in her? He fell in love? Hmm? A cult leader. This is just a behavior of a cult leader. This guy, he should be busy praying to God and he want to spread his religion, blah, blah, blah. But no, no, he want to have a sex with a child. She is six years old. And not only that, Muhammad, he invited all the Muslims not to marry a woman, but to sex, to have sex with the children. As we see here in the story, Muhammadi advised his companions not to marry a woman. Go and marry a young child, so you can play with her. What is the reason to have a female child, so you can sport with her? Do you see it, guys? Do you see it says play with her? Do you see the word play with her? Muhammad is not only a cult leader, he is the devil. He is asking men, adult men, in his age, in the age of 50 and 60 and even 70, not to marry women who they are widows or women who they are women. Go and marry a child. And what is the logic? So you can play with her. And she play with you. This is a prophet of God? Is that the reason to marry somebody? And how we can marry a child? So we marry a child and the purpose is so we can have fun and we play with her. So the child is a sex toy by the cult leader of Allah. Do you see it? Where is the Muslim? Say to me, you liar. Just say it. I mean, it's in front of you. 
Do you respect a man if a man he come to your son-in-law and he says to him, Why you marry this woman, which is your daughter? Go and marry a child so you can play with her. I mean, look at this filthy, devilish man. What's your business? The man is happy to marry that woman. Why you want him to leave his wife so he can get a child? And what is the wisdom? So you might play with her. And here this is telling you that Muhammad he like, he enjoy sexual activities with the children. What else prove to us that Muhammad is a cult leader? Additional to false prophecies, we, we, we have tons of them. Additional to scientific errors in the Quran, additional to history errors, additional to all the garbage in the Quran. What else? Well, name for me one thing about him is not making him a cult leader. Many of you, they speak to me almost for sure, those who need help. And it's for free. Have you ever heard of a prophet? He will talk to you if you pay him. Hmm? If you want to meet with the Prophet in private, you have to pay Dr. Muhammad. Nothing for free. I mean, not even God. You want to speak to the Prophet and you think you can do it for free? Are you an idiot? Before you meet the Prophet, and supposedly the one is talking is who? Allah. It's not Muhammad who wants the money. Like, come on. And by the way, the Muslim they say to us, do you know that the Prophet, when he die, he he, he borrow uh, you know he, he borrow money from a Jewish guy next door. When, when Muhammad died, he killed all the Jews and he stole all their money. I want the Muslim to show me the reference, by the way, for this fake story. So we can love together. Even if you insult the Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad will forgive you. You are a stupid and you are a liar. The Prophet, the Prophet, he said, uh, you, did you want to show you the reference? Even if you say the Prophet is a black, kill him. The one who said the Prophet is a black, kill him. Not saying him, he's a liar. Saying he's black. Just for saying a black, you, he should be killed. So you are a liar and you are a deceiver. The Prophet, and who is the Prophet to forgive me? Who is he? Is Allah? Is he your God? Secondly, where do you get this from? Can you show me the reference where it says that the prophet he forgave those who insulted him? Isn't it your prophet? He says, kill them wherever you find them. Isn't it your prophet? He says, fight the Christians and the Jews and kill them. Either they pay the jizya or they die. Why you lie? Is this your Quran or my Quran? Hmm? The Christians did not do anything wrong with him. He want to kill them and they did not do anything wrong with them. And you are saying to me, the prophet will forgive you. You're right. A woman, she made a poetry against him and she is 83 years old. Muhammad, he split her two pieces by tying her feet between two camels. You see how much merciful he is. Muhammad, he put nails in the eyes of those who left Islam. Do you see how they, I mean, they play, they play the, they are sheep, you know, like in the sheep. Well, you can, you can change your uniform as much as you wish. The verse in the front of you. Take not Christians and Jews as a friends. So he will forgive me as what? As a friend? What about 929 where it says kill them? 
What about your prophet saying, if you see a Christian in the road, humiliate him, spit in his face, force him to walk in the sewage? So you want to give us an idea that your prophet was a wonderful person? Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? I, I, that's it. I believed you. I mean, just say to me two words and that's it. We will cry with you. Is that your prophet saying this? Where is the guy who was saying the prophet of Allah will forgive me? Hmm? This is the ethic of Muhammad. Christians who did not insult him, they did not do anything just because they are Christians. He's saying to the, his followers, if you see a Christian or a Jew in the street, spit in his face and force him to walk in the sewage. Am I lying? Don't give him a pass. If Muhammad right now is living in New York and he control New York, you Christian, you have to walk in the sewage because Muslims only can walk in the top of the street. Am I lying? So why you lie? Why you lie and you say to us that Muhammad, he is a nice person, he forgive you, all this garbage you say to us. Hmm? Maybe you think you are, we are a bunch of fool. Right? Yeah, this hadith is weak, yeah. But it's a Sahih al-Bukhari. It is Sahih Muslim. Weak what? <laughs> and this is Quran, by the way. The Quran says that, not only the, the hadith. The Quran says, They have to pay the jizya with humiliation. This is Quran. Do we have any Muslim want to say something? Thank you, Bam. Well, you see, before you go and speak to anyone, you have to learn. You know, the, 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 the funny thing is, we, some, some of us as a Christians, we want to talk about a topic, but we do not know the topic yet. You know what I mean? So if you want to speak to somebody, he is a Muslim, about Christianity, before you speak to him, you should learn very well about his stupid cult. Otherwise, he himself, he might be able to fool you. It's like going to uh, an area infected by Ebola, and yet you think you are immune. And the immunity will happen if you have a full understanding of the devil plan. How the devil come to you? The devil, he changed his uniforms. The Lord, he says, be, be vigilant. Be aware of false prophets who come to you in a clothes of a, a sheep, but they are wolves. So you have to learn about the false prophet, about them, who they are, how you can expose them, before you start teaching somebody about who is the good and who is the bad. Does this text exist in Islam I don't know what do you mean my friend chapter 28 verse number 59 I don't know what do you mean <clears throat> what 
What? 2859. What do you want? This one? This one? I don't know what you mean. Okay, what about it? I mean, where, where is the question? Guys, if you want to ask me something, ask me a question. I mean, does this text, I don't know what is that. Uh, where is the question? How I can answer you? George is saying he will quit donating if any Abdul can prove me wrong. Well, Georgie, I think you have a problem now. You have to donate forever. <laughs> you should make it the opposite way. So what the question, guys? What is the gentleman who asked me a question about this verse? I don't know what you want. Does Quran 28... 59 59 end Islam what does that mean I was uh, with my respect to you my friend I don't understand anything what you are what end Islam what does have I don't know anyone understand guys maybe English is not your first language maybe because my English is not my good I don't know but I cannot understand what you are saying what does have to do with the end of Islam I apologize, I cannot. That mean the end of jihad? No, no, no. No, my friend, my friend. Uh, all what the verse is saying, that Allah will not destroy people unless he send them a warner first. So he send a warner first, and then he destroy the people. But this is very stupid. Anyone know why? Anyone knows why? If Allah will not destroy a nation unless He send them a warner, then there's many nations are not exist today no more. And they never receive a warner. They are totally demolished. Secondly, the Quran says in different verse, we never send a messenger except in his own language his, to his people. Which means there is no prophet will be an Arab prophet for somebody is from India or Sri Lanka. We never send a messenger save with the language of his folk. Do you see it, guys? So if the Muslim they want to say to us that Allah He sent the warner, his name is Muhammad for all mankind, that is a total contradiction for the verse in the front of us. Why I don't show my face? Are you in uh, uh, interested in dating men? Yunus? Do you like men or what? Why you want to see my face? What is your interest? Do you like men or something? Why anyone want to see my face? What's your business? And maybe I look bad. What's your business? I mean, people are really silly. So if I show you my face now, you will stay watching. Trust me, you will leave. You will say, oh no, I'm not going to stay here. Look at this guy, how he look like. 
I go in the bus, everybody leave. I go in the airplane, everybody jump from the windows. What's your business? Anyway. And this is why I'm still single. Did you ask yourself why I'm still single? Last time I asked a woman to marry me, she said, why? There's no man left? I mean, come on, why you want to hurt my feeling now? I, let me get a tissue. I want to cry. <laughs> okay, we go back to the topic. So we never send a messenger save with the language of his folk. So he have to be from the folk and he have to speak the language of the folk to his folk. Was Muhammad from Sri Lanka? Was Muhammad from India? Was Muhammad from Pakistan? Hmm? The Quran is a stupid book. And this is another sign of a cult leader who teach cult contradiction. How you say that I will never send a messenger? Never. That's it, the verse in front of you. This is not my statement. This is Muhammad speaking. <clears throat> CP is not a human. <laughs> That's a good one. Any Muslim have an answer? It's in the front of you. So this verse actually proved that Muhammad is a big fat liar because no messenger should be sent to any nation unless he is from the nation, speak the language of the nation. So why? The Quran explained. So you might understand. So it will be clear for them. How you can have a clear understanding of Islam if the Quran is in the language it's not yours if you say no it's clear it's mean Allah here is lying Fahim is asking me what do you think about the jinn this is another lie Muhammad he copy from you know from the Persian and from the Indian stories genie in the ball what I think about the jinn you have to be stupid certified stupid to believe there is jinn and not only that, the Muslim they believe that jinn they can have sex with them. If you have my book Sex and Allah, you will see how a guy he saw his wife bushes, and you know what I'm talking about, between her legs in fire, claiming that this is must be because she had sex with the genie, because genie is made from fire. Makes sense. I mean, fire with the bushes, he go she go on fire there. Hmm? <sighs> any Abdul have anything to say where Muhammad he got the name Iblis very uh, the, 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 the answer is very good I mean the question is very good just go right now in, in Google type the word Iblis and you will find that this is a proof again that Muhammad is a false prophet because why Allah he used a word which is a Greek word Like you see, if the Quran written by Muhammad and he is using the language which people they use, I will say, okay, well, you know what? He don't have a name for him. But this is supposedly the God who is, you know, the founder of the earth. Why he do not know the name of Shaitan? So he called him Iblis. Same for the Bible. What is the name of the Bible in the in the Quran? Anyone knows? What the Quran called the gospel, the New Testament? Indeed. 
all the verses in the Quran speak about a book it's called Injil okay where you get the word Injil from <laughs> you see the Muslim they say to you and this is additional proof that Muhammad is a cult leader they say to you that Isa which is supposed to Jesus which we do not know who's Isa and, and, and another cult stupid talk that Isa which is Jesus supposedly he was sent only to the Jews okay how he sent only to the Jews but his book is a uh, in jail let me make it simple for you I am a person who was sent to the Jews but my book his name its name is Ching Ho he Ho wow what don't ask me to repeat again by the way I cannot so he is a messenger to the Jews but his book is the name of his book is a Greek I mean who's a stupid here Any Abdul? Yeah, I told you what happened to me in Air China. Actually, I like to go in Air China always. You know, I asked the the girl for a water. She went and she came back after fifteen minutes, and she had a beer. And I said, "Water, water." Eh, she did not answer. I got the beer, and the beer is so huge, big. That's really tastes so good, by the way. I think it's halal. I think. Then I ask her again for water. I'm, I'm thirsty. I want to drink water. I don't want beer. She brought me a beer again. I mean, if you are a person who likes to drink, go in Air China. You ask for water, they give you beer. Hmm. Be nice, guys, with your text, please. And feel sorry for the Muslims. Don't be harsh on them. You are not allowed to drink alcohol. So why your prophet, he was teaching you how to make alcohol. And why the Quran says that alcohol is a miracle of Allah. You don't like to drink the miracle of Allah? Many Muslims, by the way, do not know that Muhammad, he claimed that the the uh, 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 when you get drunk, it's a miracle from Allah. Do you believe it? Here we go. Chapter 16, verse number 67. Hmm? This is a sign from Allah? Did I lie? Here we go. It's in front of you. In this, indeed, this is a sign for people who have wisdom. <laughs> Brother and sister, I'm now enjoying the sign of Allah. I drank a lot of beer, camel urine. Are you there, Fahim? Hmm? Thank you, John. Thank you, all those who support. I really appreciate you. God bless. Are you there, Fahim? Why Allah claiming that making you drunk is a sign from Allah and only those who have wisdom, they understand it? Any Abdul in the bushes? And by the way, I don't really drink. I mean, I have a I have a bottle of wine, and I know now it's already almost two years I have it here. I think it's still I have maybe thirty percent of it. You believe it? Almost two years. This is how much I drink. Any Muslim have any comment? 
getting drunk is a sign from Allah Muhammad claiming that getting drunk is a miracle of Allah hmm. okay and you people you say Muhammad have no miracles are you using it as a souvenir actually it was a gift I uh, I have a neighbor who came from abroad he brought me no actually not this one I have another one it's still open but it's not wine I don't know what the name hold on let me read the name because I'm so expert with alcohol I have no idea what you see when I go if I want to buy a beer do you know what the only name I name I know a Hineken because this is the only name I know I don't know like they said what do you like to drink you know I uh, Hineken I learned it long time ago and that's it I'm stuck with it this is how expert I am not expert in drinking the same I am expert in Quran hold on let me see what the name of this thing I don't know why I have it hmm. oh you know what I think I I think I gave it out I don't know the name I think I gave it out I cannot find it but it's uh, it have like a yellow color I don't know what the, what it is inside and I don't know he told me it's nice whatever but <clears throat> no no this is not a beer it's not a, it's not a beer yeah, it's not a beer no anyway so any Muslim Is the there a hadith that take talk about miracle? <clears throat> well, you know, uh, there is many stupid statements, stories uh, they come with, but nobody can come to us with any authentic source of even their lies. As an example, Muhammad. Uh, uh, he made the he made the the lizard convert to Islam. Did you hear this story? A Bedouin man he came and he have a big lizard, the, the, the lizard of the desert. You know the they, they call them not lizard actually they call them dub dub. So the dub is like a, a maybe thirty to forty centimeter long can go. Is a is not harmful. Uh, and the Arab they used to kill it and eat it. So the Bedouin man, he came and he have a dead lizard in his hand, or let us say in his the back of his donkey or horse. So Muhammad he said to him, "Why you don't convert to Islam?" The Bedouin man he says, "If my dub, my lizard, my desert lizard convert to Islam, I will." So Muhammad he said to him, "Bring me the lizard." And then Muhammad he said to the lizard, "Who I am?" The lizard he says, "The messenger of Allah." He said, and who is God? He said, Allah, and he looked up the lizard. And then he says, and what you believe? He said, I bear witness that there is no prophet but you and Allah is God. That the lizard converted to Islam, he took shahada. No comment. Why I don't use my Skype? What the point? You want to, you know, if we have a Muslim I debate me, we can use a pal talk. We use pal talk. I we use pal talk for many many years. Uh, Skype became a very, you know, uh, a bad choice. I have new ads every day by thousands. Uh, well, you will not find this in any English. Uh, book this is all Arabic and Muslim will not translate those things but maybe if you search on Google let me see maybe we can find a Muslim article translating the story here we go Okay. 
Who was the one who asked me for for the story? But those are just like you know uh, fabricated stories by the Abdul, and even the Abduls themselves, most of them they don't really take them seriously. But anyway, uh, this is a translation of the story. I, I think it's by Abdul or something like that. All right. The day the dead lizard Dab Dab spoke to Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> One day, a Bedouin Arab, after hunting a dub, which is a you know, as you see, actually the dub look a little bit different from what he saw on the screen, was in his way back home to his village when he passed the prophet who was gathered with his companion. The Bedouin approached him, approached him, and asked. In this approving manner, who are you all gathered around? The man that claims himself to be a prophet? He came closer to the prophet and said to him, You, Muhammad, no woman has ever given birth to a bigger liar than you. If it was not, that my people would call me uh, what hasty I would have killed you immediately and they pleased everyone that who reject you object you the prophet and the companion Omar uh, let us go to the story here okay the Bedouin came closer and drew from his leave or his sleeve a sleeve it's like it's not his sleeve of his uh, uh, Arm, no, like uh, you know, where he put uh, your stores stuff in your donkey or your horse, and uh, a, a lizard he had hunted earlier with a totally uh, uh, battling manner, which means the lizard is totally dead. Hmm? The prophet swore upon his men, man made idols, that he would not believe in this prophet. Until the lizard believe first The one who asked me the question are you there? The one who asked me about the story Anyway, then this, the lizard he, he spoke to the prophet as you see <clears throat> Here Muhammad he said He said to the to the lizard When he spoke to him Immediately, the lizard emerged from the dead. That's it. He came alive. By the will of Allah, the exalted and spoke in articulate manner, brother. And there is stood by all Arabs. So this, this lizard, he starts speaking Arabic. Not only he speak, I mean, it's not only the prophet he speak and to the lizard, like in their own language. No, no, no. He speak Arabic. All right. He replied to the prophet, Here I am at your service, sir. The lizard says to Muhammad, For your pleasure, sir. The lizard saying to Muhammad, The prophet of God of all creation. Muhammad is a prophet for the lizard, too. Not only prophet for a human, he is a prophet for the lizard. The prophet asked the lizard, The meaning of which is, who do you worship? The lizard replied, and remember, this is the Muslim translation, not my story. The one that owes the throne above paradise and the earth among his dominion and in his seas follow his stream and in paradise is his mercy and in Hell is his torture. Here we go. This this uh, this uh, this lizard is a very educated lizard. He knew everything about the Quran. He did not take a lesson. He did not take. A, he did not go to the mosque. But he is a Muslim already. He knew. Not only that, he is. He give interpretation now. He is like a Qurtubi, a Jalalain. He's Ibn Kathir. You never know. Maybe he, maybe this guy is the son of Ibn Kathir. And then the Prophet then asked the lizard. 
the meaning of which is who I am who am I Muhammad asking the lizard who I am I mean this is a good question the lizard the brother he said without hesitation look at this not only like he did not think oh let me call a friend no 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 the lizard he answered that the, the dub lizard answer without hesitation you are the messenger of God master of Allah supposedly of all the creation and the last of all the prophet so this 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 lizard he knew everything man we should have this lizard in the D show but now if we search for the reference for this stories we will find that all of them they are stupid and they are not exist this is all in interpretation we cannot find reading if you, if anybody can find me if a Muslim listening he can find me an authentic source for this story let me know please You know, I remember once I saw a lizard. I look at him, he look at me. I look at him, he look at me again. And then I look at him, and then he look at me again. But you know, here, guys, you remember that Muhammad, he says that the lizard is the enemy of Allah? I mean, how this lizard is a Muslim? Isn't it Muhammad who says the one who killed the lizard? From the first shot, Allah will give him extra extra reward? Stupidity. How he says that lizard is the enemy of Allah? Because he tried to burn Abraham. And here the lizard is a Muslim. Arabian prophet, there is a hadith in your book about not marrying and breeding with the black people because it damaged the race. Is it Shia or Sunni? Well, this is considered by both actually because you see most of the hadith is collected uh, about Ali is collected by the Shia uh, But this one as I believe it is a created by both All right And for sure this is nothing but racism the Arab and you know we have to be honest you know uh, the Arab people I am an I am an Arab and uh, you know most majority of us are very racist extremely racist and they are so proud but about what I have no idea this is why I don't really associate with with Arab people even even Arab Christian I don't like to go out with them like you see a guy Living in America, he have uh, five, ten uh, uh, gas stations. He driving the most expensive car, and then he starts saying, "America, brother, America, <laughs> bad, bad country." And I cannot take it no more. I said, "You know, this is this you, you, all of you are a bunch of idiots. They are sitting at the table and they are telling me about the bad America. So why, why you are here? Take your passport and leave. I mean, America is a stupid. America is bad. Americans are not good. So why you are here?" I mean, you are a, you are a big fat hypocrite. You don't like America. Take your passport. Go right now. You know, you, I will I will drive. I will I will drop you in the airport. <laughs> you know what I mean? I cannot take it no more. That's why I don't associate it with anyone. Hypocrites. You don't like America, and you die to come to America. You know what I mean? Take them now and kick them out of America. They will cry, please, please, get us back. Uh, give them their passport. Make them American. They start bad mouth America. Anyway, we gave you a story about the lizard for the one who asked about it. 
if you don't love America, if you don't love any country you live in, I mean, who is forcing you to stay? You you are an immigrant, and you come to a country, and yet you bad mouth the country who gave you gave you citizenship. They respected you. They give you a life. I mean, this is this is a big fat hypocrisy. Go to your paradise. Go where you came from. Leave this country for the country of those country of those the, the people of the country. And by the way, you as a Christian, when you go and live in a country, you have a duty to love the country because you have a duty to love people who they are around you. How you cannot love? It's a gift from God. God, He gave you a home. God, He gave you a shelter. How you can bad mouth those who give you a shelter? Now, do we have any Muslim he have anything to say about Allah Prophet saying that getting drunk is a sign from Allah? Because I like to witness this uh, uh, sign every day in the Middle East now. What about my the 12 Imam? It's a big fat lie. There's nothing is called 12 Imam. You see, uh, it's, it's the Islamic cult is mixed of with a lot of other mythology. Twelve apostle of Jesus suddenly became a twelve Imam in Islam. Did you notice? And just trying to copy. Jesus have a twelve apostle. Muhammad should have a twelve Imam. I mean, as simple as that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Isn't it obvious? Muhammad is trying to copy Jesus. You see, the problem is, you know, since I was in school, uh, I read the same page, but none of the students who they are with me, they see what I see in the page I'm reading. It's the same book, the guy next to me and the guy next to him. Nobody see what I see. And I believe the reason for that, because we learn how to read, but we did not learn how to analyze and to think deeply. So we read, we hear information, and we take it. And okay, but ask yourself, I mean, if, if, what 12 Imam? Why Muhammad need 12 Imam? If he's the last prophet anyway, who need the Imam anyway? And what those Imam will do? Imam Mahdi is another fat lie. You see, the Muslims, they needed to replace Jesus. They don't have Jesus in Islam. So they have to come with a new Jesus. Muhammad, they don't fit. He's, a, he's an idiot. So they come with an idea. There's a guy, his name is going to be Al Mahdi. Al Mahdi, it's mean the guidance. If, if, if this guy is the guidance or the guide, so who is Muhammad then? I mean, this is stupid. And then they come with other agenda, or let us say another uh, 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 fabricated story, that Al-Mahdi, because he is very special for Allah, his mother, she did not give birth to him from her vagina. She gave birth to him from the side of her thigh. There is no way Al-Mahdi will be born of a vagina. Are you kidding me? So, it is fiction stories, and fiction stories will make uh, religions. Yeah, she did not give birth to him from her vagina because he's in Mahdi. Are you kidding me? They would kill you if you say uh, she is born from a vagina. Hello? And then they say to you that Al Mahdi disappeared. He took the Quran with him and he gone. And the real Quran will come when the Mahdi come back. All what happened, that this guy who claimed to be Al-Mahdi, he is supposed to be descendant from Ali, he was killed by the Caliphate. The Caliphate took him, make him shish kebab as the embassy of Saudi Arabia. And nobody saw him after that. Then they, they, they spread the news that Al-Mahdi is gone. God took him. 
and until now the Abdul are waiting anything else no both and uh, both Sunni and Shia they believe in Al Mahdi but every one of them have different story you see it's like you have one religion but it have two Mickey Mouse Mickey Mouse of the Shia, he speak differently from Mickey Mouse of the Sunni, but both they have Mickey Mouse. <clears throat> Anything else? So, if there is any Muslim here who want to prove me wrong that Allah and Islam is nothing but a cult, it's a fabricated cult. What kind of religion says that being drunk is a sign from Allah? Thank you, Mar Marijana. Happy Easter. I'm saying your name correctly. You guys, why you make your name difficult for me? Difficult for me to read. I, I am illiterate, and then you give me a name. It's hard to read. By the way, as long as I'm illiterate, I'm thinking to claim to be a prophet. I think this will be very profit, pro profitable. What do you think? Maria, Mariana? Mariana. Okay, I thought it's a Mary. Okay, sorry. Mariana. A ah, nice name. It's coming from Mary, right? Is it true that the sum of the Sahaba killed their own family members because of Muhammad? Well, the Quran says in chapter 9, verse 23, take not your father and your brother as a friend, which mean what? Which mean you kill them. They are your enemies. Marija or Marijuana? Marijuana, Marijuana, <laughs> the name. <laughs> I thought it's Mariana. <laughs> you know, this guy Bernie Sander, he want to legalize marijuana to be. Uh, I mean, he want every citizen to have. I mean, this guy he's fighting for us. I mean, you see, I mean, this those liberals are really weird. Stop war in drugs, and he's speaking to his followers like stop war in drugs. And legalize marijuana, so everybody have to sleep to, to to smoke. So you will go in the highway, and this is what Bernie Sander he want. You go in the highway, everybody is high, hi, hi. <laughs> oh boy, stupid, stupid Bernie Sander. I mean, where are those guys coming from? Don't we have enough donkeys in this world? Uh, why Muhammad like toop a killer? I don't know what do you mean. What toop a killer? Sorry, I did not understand. Do we have any Abdul? Yesterday it was a marijuana day in Canada. Are you serious? Unbelievable. I mean, what is what what is the future for our childrens with the stupidity of the left? Happy Easter, my friend in Indonesia. You know, I never smoke a cigarette all my life, and I will never do. All my life. Was it the Muslims from Sri Lanka? Well, according to uh, the, the announcement, there is a group, it's called al, al Jama'a al Islamiyah, something like that, like the Islamic group. They are the one who is behind this. I mean, isn't it obvious? I mean, those are suicide bomber. It's going to be who? Uh, 
there's 12 Imam before the Prophet Muhammad how they can be before him what does that mean no supposedly there's a 12 Imam Imam is a leader supposedly uh, they will be after him and they, they will be from his blood bloodline according to the Shia <clears throat> Anything? Any Muslim have a question for us? Can you talk about Muhammad King, innocent people? Will he go and open the news? He just did today, 207 people. One of those terrorists, he go in the buffet, two buffet. Imagine buffet. You cannot even go for a buffet these days. You go to a buffet, you might die. They go in the buffet and they line and they have a dish in his hand and when the buffet gets so busy he explodes himself and supposedly now Allah is happy Allah is very happy it's a blood day he's thirsty Dracula And then you go in the West and they are covering up for Islam. Go and ask any, go open your news. Who is the one talking about Islamic terrorist attack in Sri Lanka? Nobody. Man, it's, it's gone. That's it. They forget about them. You know, there's many reason to forget about those poor Christians in Sri Lanka. Uh, happy Easter. Um, yes. Thank you. Uh, they are from Sri Lanka, which is a poor country. They are people of color. And they are Christians, so it's going to remember them. Three in one, poor, dark skin, and Christian. And then you want the world to remember you? They will talk about you for two seconds. Uh, trust me, the CNN mentioned the news, the weather news more than they spoke about Sri Lanka. That's it, it's gone. When a criminal he attack a mosque in New Zealand, the whole world is talking about it for two for, for two weeks, never stop. Hmm. Go to your news, see how many how much they are talking about it. They might talk about it now more because there is some Western are killed in the hotel. Uh, there are Westerns now, and this is more interesting for the media. Uh, some Western are there is some rich people get killed, but the poor uh, Sri Lankan who care for them Right Consider that you are Arab can you clarify that the word Allah and God mean the same no Anyone he says to you that the word Allah and the word God is the same I say to you and you can take it from me to him you are a certified donkey when the Muslim they take Shahada what they say do they say there is no Allah but Allah have you ever seen a Muslim saying there's no Allah but Allah if Allah is a word being God then they should say there is no Allah but Allah correct I mean very simple and you don't need to be genius but they don't say that they say there's no God but Allah so Allah is not just a, it's not a word mean God it's a name for the God which they worship right but anyway I saw many many donkeys and yet they claim to be Christians they are teaching false teaching When my Quran translation will be ready when I stop making live broadcast <laughs> because I'm not really doing good you know this is taking a lot of time from me and by the way uh, once once a Christian he sent me a long email he says Christian Prince I really like what you do but why you keep saying like the word donkey stupid 
and you know like he is he's been nice but he is giving me advice that this is not really uh, too much Christian guys what Jesus said to the hypocrite Jews anyone remember you're the son of what anyone remember I will let you remember vibers so I mean some Christians sometime I don't know that I have a problem with them I mean Jesus himself he called he did not say stupid he said something more more far from that the sons of vibers I did not say to anyone that I just say stupid the Bible says don't call your brother the one who called someone a foolish but the Bible call people foolish too if they do foolish stuff so if you call somebody a name he don't have or let us say if you give him an description that will be a name unless it is a true so if I say to you a liar I'm not going to give you a name you know what I mean if I say to somebody When you don't worship Jesus, you are being a fool. This is what the whole Bible teaching that foolish the foolish man, he knew where to go. He go after the devil. The wise man, the whole Bible is speaking about who? About the foolish man and the wise man. So when the Bible says, "Don't call somebody foolish or stupid," talking about somebody, he's not being stupid. Because stupidity here is about following the wrong Lord. <clears throat> Do you understand me? And what I can do, I mean, this is who I am. You don't like to listen to me, sorry. This is how I talk. Once I was, uh, 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 what's Cindy saying? Uh, too many texts, sorry guys. May I please ask you for your view on Ilhan Omar remarks? I don't know, I don't want to go for this uh, 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 stories. You know, you, you, you American, you vote for them and then you complain about them? Eh? Enjoy it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, if you did not put it here, there, I'm not saying you, I'm saying the, the American who voted for this. Okay, this is what you get. Uh, thank you very much. I mean, we put them in office and then we complain why they are there. Good luck. No comments. Now, uh, once I was doing a seminar and the priest and or the minister in the church uh, he want to introduce me but he is worrying about the way I talk so he starts saying today we have a brother who speak differently he don't speak like us I mean the guy he keep going keep going he's preparing them for the disaster it's coming you know and he was worried that those people will not like it I supposed to speak for like half hour, 45 minutes. Guys, my airplane come and nobody want to leave. They close the door, nobody, they will not go. I told them the airplane is waiting for them. I have to go, I will lose my airplane. He will not go. But the minister was worried because he's preparing them. This brother, he's like, you know, he is uh, like, I was looking at him and I say, oh God, what this guy is doing? <laughs> You know, he want to tell them that he is not going to speak like us, and this is true. I don't speak like them. We stayed all the time, and people they're dying laughing, enjoying their time, and the doors cannot even be closed because people they are all the way. I mean, the the, the walkway. It it was actually it was a stadium. It's not like a church. It's a, it's a 
uh, it's like a basketball stadium they convert it into a church on Sunday so it's really big so the chairs in the in the in the ground the, uh, the playground is full the stadium is full and then the doors they cannot close it no more but in the beginning he was worried <clears throat> Uh, our pastor tried getting back today from our church trip to Haiti. Miss boarding by one minute. Got stuck in ATL. I don't know what ATL mean. What ATL mean? Um. <clears throat> Uh, no, my friend, I uh, Fahim saying you are not following the command of a prophet Jesus. By the way, the only prophet is exist in this world is God. Other names are just delivering a message of the true prophet, which is God. A man is not a prophet. And to make it simple for you, like we believe Moses is a prophet, right? Yes, he is. But he is a prophet prophesying for God the true prophet is the real prophet is God who tell us about the prophecies the man is just deliver the message but we call him a prophet secondly if I don't love you Fahim as God order me I will not be talking to you right now look after all what you Muslims did to us Christians being slaughtered churches are burned our countries are demolished Millions of Christians are killed. I'm talking to you. I'm not I'm not saying hey Allahu Akbar. I want to attack you Actually every day I say to the Christians, please don't fail into a hated trap and love the Muslims Now the question is for him are you following the prophet who says do jihad against me? You are not Look like you are not convinced Allahu Akbar mean okay there is many th uh, theories about Allahu Akbar let us try to explain Allahu Akbar now some false ignorant people they might say to you as usual different explanation I'm trying to find a space to write in it well, space 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 okay hold on we were right here in Arabic the word Akbar has many many meanings So when a Muslim he says Allah you notice he pronounced something he say who Akbar correct who who Akbar but when they say it they say it but they don't write it who Akbar Allah who who Akbar Wa in Arabic mean and mean what and now we have a better idea about Allah and Akbar there are two it's not about one Akbar most likely according to the Arab mythology he was highly possible he is the Sun God and Muhammad he came to bring Tawheed as the Muslim they say to us Tawheed mean what unification
type in Arabic, it comes in English. So, start switching. Tawheed. Tawheed means unification. So why Muhammad need to unify, unify God if he believe in one God? You know what I mean? If you ask a Muslim, what, what Tawheed mean? He says to you, the oneness of God. That's a lie. Tawheed does not mean the oneness of God. Tawheed means unification. The same as you say, United States of America. The Muslim, they just copy paste. Muhammad, he, he said, uh, Allahu Akbar. Muslim, they say, Allahu Akbar. Muhammad, he said to them, Allahu Akbar. Say, Allahu Akbar when you when you attack the enemy because how, that, that will install terror in their heart. So Allahu Akbar became a sign of a ter of a terrorism. So when you hear somebody scream Allahu Akbar, you will be uh, scared because simply it's a terrorist, obviously. So they try to intimidate you by Allahu Akbar. However, ISIS were screaming Allahu Akbar day and night in Syria, and they've been humiliated. And Allah Akbar, neither Allah Asghar, the small did not help them. All right. You should react to merciful servant video of Jesus is not good in the Bible. I don't know what does that mean. Most of the war we are defensive. What war? What war was defensive? Guys, if you want to make a question for me, make a statement so I can understand. I mean, put a name there, make it make it a full comment. Otherwise, I have like a read two words from you and then I have to follow. Anyway, so we go back to Allahu Akbar. So obviously. There is there is a book, but I cannot get my hand on it, where it says that Akbar was one of the idols exist in Mecca, and he was a huge Akbar in Arabic mean big, or bigger. So what Muhammad he did, there is people who worship Allah, and there is people who worship Akbar. So let us make Allah Akbar, one God, unify God. As simple as that. Uh, what is the name of the book you saying this is in the books or the interpretation books actually I'm trying to find the reference anyway uh, some some people they might say to you that Allah Akbar mean God is a great that is a lie and let us show some proofs. Did, did I say to you that Akbar is most likely the, the, the sun god? Did I say that? I said that, right? Okay. How, how we can prove that? I mean, if somebody asks you to prove it, how you can prove it? I will go to the Quran. In the Quran, suppose there is a story about Abraham. When Abraham he saw the sun, he said, "Hada Rabbi, Hada Akbar." Do you see the word Akbar? Thank you, Eva. Happy Easter, guys. Do you see the word Akbar? This is Akbar. I just said to you. That Akbar obviously is the sun god. Abraham, according to the Quran, he worship the moon, the stars, and the sun. So when he saw the sun, he said, This is my God, this is Akbar. 
And this is the Muslim translation. When he saw the sun rising, he said, this is my Lord, this is Akbar. He did not say this is greater. So do we have a proof that Akbar is, is, is... You see, Abraham, he did not say Akbar when he spoke about the moon. He did not say Akbar when he spoke about the star. He said this is Akbar when he spoke about the sun. Maybe you should send them to me, uh, rent if you don't need them. This is the chapter 6, verse number 78. You know, if a Muslim, he says, oh, he just mean this is the greater. Okay, well, the word there is Akbar. So why you Muslims? Why you Muslim you say Allah is a greater if the sun is a greater? What does that mean greater uh, and, and by the way the word the greater is a stupid word to use when you speak about God I will explain to you In order to compare Between anything you have to compare between two things from the same kind do we agree? It is silly to compare between a TV and an elephant. Correct? Taller, greater, so shorter, always have to be compared between two from the same kind, otherwise it's stupid. So I can compare between a human and a human. I can compare between an animal and an animal. But I cannot say to a man, you are greater than a dog, unless I'm trying to make fun either of him. I mean, what is the greater of a dog? <laughs> greater of a comparing him to a dog. That's not right. So greater, if it exists in this in this meaning, it should be about comparing between two. So who is the two Muhammad comparing to? So if the Muslim they say Allahu Akbar mean Allah is a greater. Okay, is a greater from who? That is stupid. You cannot compare God to a human. Uh, Rizal, are you promoting the, the video? Did them say there is millions of videos attacking Jesus? Why you are why you are so worried? Let them cry. Unless you are trying to promote for it, because this is what some Christians they do. They supposedly are Christians, and they go around they post videos of somebody attacking the Bible, and supposedly they are the good Christians, and they want somebody to defend the Bible. If you are a good Christian, you will not promote a false video. And why you don't yourself respond to it? Like, are you a counterfeit of a Christian? You do it. You may maybe you can do better than me. No, you do not need me. Don't promote videos of the Antichrist. This is what they do. They post a video. This guy he says this a Christian TV. Okay, now many Christians they will click on it, and there is some of them they are naive, they will be mistaken by you by, by, by you. And maybe even it's a Muslim claiming to be Christian, saying, "I uh, why you don't respond? And maybe this is the same guy who made the video. He wants uh, to get attention. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nobody is watching his videos, and so now people will search for it. <laughs> anyway. Hey, come on. No, we, we destroy Allah. We don't destroy Abdul. I'm not worried about the Abdul. They can say whatever they want. Here we go. We are here. What we are doing now? What I'm doing? Do you see me wasting my time? They are kids. Let them cry. The man of them, he have the courage. Let him call me.
Anything else, guys? Anyone have a question? Yeah, we don't want to destroy the Muslims. We are destroying the cult of Islam. Muslims are poor people. They are victims of this cult. Like those guys, those people today, who explode themselves, they are a bunch of fools. They are worshipping their penis. Muhammad, he, you know, they say brainwash. It's more than a brainwash. When you are a person who believe it truly in Allah, you don't believe in Allah as much you believe in your penis. Those people, they want to die so they can go and start effing women. This is the truth. You don't worship God. You seek the benefit from that God. The benefit of that God, there is women, they are waiting for you. The second, the second you explode, you will be in heaven in the other side and women, they are going to jump on you. It's a sex ideology. Pure sex belief. Everything about this cult is about sex. Sex is stomach, like from the stomach and down. If Muhammad is so bad, then how can he have a grandson like Hussein? Hussein is an, is a is a criminal like his like his father, grandfather. Who said to you Hussein was a good person? Let me show you what Hussein, the sons of, of Ali, what they did. <laughs> Hussein, you are right. They are criminals, all of them. They say to you, burning people is haram. Ali, he burned people alive. Do you see it? This is the father of Hassan al Hussein. You see it? And Muhammad, by the way, he was going to burn Muslims for not just coming for Friday prayer, but then he changed his mind. Hmm. So guys, I hope, I hope that we are spending our time with you and it's useful for you. I really, I really love, or I love it when I see Christians, they are able to refute, not only to refute, to demolish the cult of Islam. So I hope that you guys, when you watch my videos, you have all, I have thousands of videos. Anytime there's a reference you do not know how to get, I will teach you how easy to get it. For sure, I'm saying because you learned from me, but not by yourself. But like now, we have this hadith in the front of us. And you don't know, okay, you saw it in the video. And you don't know how to get it. It's very easy. You know, try as if you are doing copy-paste. For sure, you cannot copy and paste a video, right? Just type few words as it is exactly in the hadith, word by word, and put it in Google, and you will find the reference. Very easy. I mean, you guys, you are lucky. When I was, when I was you know, a kid or teenage, I wish we have internet at that time. Like, in order to show you now what I am showing you, I have to have a big house full of books. And it's going to take me hours to even find the reference. Now you have to go and look which book. There's no way you can remember which page and which, you know, it's impossible. Right? No, always, you know, don't tell me, can you put a link for a reference? You know, you can get it. I mean, why are you, why are you are lazy? Do we have any uh, Abdul?
you know some some people by the way I'm not I don't mean anyone here just uh, I'm just joking uh, it's like somebody he want to have a family but and he want to have a children but he don't want to have sex there's many people like that I mean they are so lazy to the point that they want to do nothing I mean they want everything ready there's a group of Arab my, my people they decide to commit suicide life is boring but they are lazy they are lazy they don't like to live anymore they want to die so they hire uh, you know they don't want to climb the mountain and jump it's too much we cannot climb uh, I mean we need an easy way easy way to die so they uh, somebody told them why you don't go and uh, you know drop yourself in the sea so they ask a, a captain to take them in his ship he took them to the middle of the sea he said okay you want to jump jump he said why you want to jump can't you make a hole in the ship <laughs> i mean come on didn't they tell you we are lazy you want us to jump make a hole in the ship we will go down let us sleeping so even they want to commit suicide but they don't want to jump I mean it's too much work right <laughs> anyway so any uh, any any other question guys I'm enjoying my time with you and uh, uh, like the only thing make me uh, uh, like not happy really to be in the it's a Easter day is what happened in Sri Lanka but you know we as a Christian we used to this and it's a blessing for for those who they die for for, for just because they are Christians they are with the Lord I'm just you know sorry for their families I mean imagine you know you send your child to the church to pray and then they bring him back pieces how disgusting I don't know what to say and you know uh, life sometimes is really, really weird I mean sometimes I ask myself I mean why you know I mean why why a child this child he got killed today I mean I'm, I'm a guy I, I always I face a lot of risk and nothing happened to me but I believe I believe that you know as the Bible said the Sun raised up of a bone the bad and the good and one day those criminals they will pay a severe punishment in the front of the Lord thank you first and last happy resurrection day by the way I encourage you all to uh, to which witness, witness life uh, the the Easter according to the Orthodox calendar because in that time an amazing miracle happened every year a great light come from the empty tomb of Christ I don't know how many of you knows about it but this has happened every year I'm searching for the videos so just to show you You can search for the live broadcast for this event because they do live. And uh, it's a, it's an amazing miracle for those who don't believe unless they see. You can fly to Jerusalem yourself and witness with your own eyes.
yeah it's it is it is just a miracle nobody can explain it God himself is a miracle um, no the the you know you see uh, killing or terrorism in Islam is supposedly the way to 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 make people uh, live in fear and then they accept Islam yes Muhammad he says I've been victorious by terror I was victorious by terror uh, th thank you dude thank you my friend if you go in the hadith you will find Muhammad saying the following so the Muslims who believe truly in Islam is the one who follow the steps of Muhammad Muhammad he says I've been victorious by terror as you see even he says I've been victorious by the terror and even I frighten my enemy from a distance of one month journey as you see in the front of you do you see it so those th those who did the terrorist attack today they are just following what Muhammad method of victory is for then the victory will be accomplished by terrifying the enemy and then they will sur surrender to Allah they die or or convert but that will never happen I am not scared and I will never be scared and I will make books about the filthy Allah until the last day of my life it doesn't matter if my last day is going to be now tomorrow next hour I don't know I have no fear of death And you know, this is my advice for people, by the way. Those who have a fear, they never enjoy their life. And, and, and uh, just to explain to you in a very easy way. Imagine you are a person who fear germs. So what? You cannot shake hands with people because, trust me, in their hands there are germs. In your hands there are germs too. You know what I mean? There's germs everywhere. In your pillow there are germs. I mean, thank God we don't see what is around us. You know what I mean? If they take your sheet and they put it under the microscope you might be scared like crazy for what you will see living with you in the bed there's the creatures we don't see them so if you are a person who have they call it a phobia right so if you're a person who is living in a fear you will never enjoy anything you will never enjoy your food you will never enjoy breathing because there are germs in the air you will never enjoy sleeping uh, you, you will never even touch your pillow because now you are under the, uh, uh, the, the the influence of fear and Muhammad he understand that and he use it very well for his benefit and there is many people because of fear they converted to Islam not because they believe in Islam that's why if you take Islam out from fear disconnect them Islam is gone there's a sheikh, his name, uh, uh, -tanta, uh, not Tantawi. I forgot his name. He's the head of the Muslim Brotherhood. He says, if we take the apostate penalty of Islam, if Abu Bakr and Umar did not kill the apostate, Islam is gone from that time. The sword, he said clearly, he, he, I'm just quoting him, because of the sword, Islam survived. So they understand the strategy very well fear and terror we cannot fight them face to face we are weak so what we do we do use terror terror is very effective easy cost do not need an army but is that going to change anything no that will make us better christians and will make me and actually you notice today i did two uh broadcasts right Actually, I felt I need to do two broadcasts because of what happened in Sri Lanka. So, such a thing encouraged me and make me feel guilty. I need to do more, not the opposite. Yeah, Al Karadawi, yes, Al Karadawi. Do we have any Abdul? 
نهج البلاغة يا there's no بلاغة في نهج البلاغة <تصفيق> نهج البلاغة <تصفيق> any Abdul here Hajj is Abdul. How are you, Hajj? Do you want to say something to us, Mr. Hajj? Anyone? If you know any any uh, Muslim, he claimed to be a scholar. Uh, we can give him my pal talk anytime, and we can. Just have him speaking to me. You know what I mean? Me myself, I do not need to prepare. Muslims, they need to prepare. You should debate Nader again. Who is this guy now? You see, uh, Rizal, if you don't behave, I'm going to block you. you. Look like you are the way that you are Nader, are you? Because you say silly stuff, I know. The only one mentioned the name is him. Are you him? <laughs> are you? You know, once, uh, once the uh, there is a guy I forgot his name. He was debating Sam Shamoon. You know Sam Shamoon, right? Uh, now, but it, like you know, there is like a form. It's like a blog. You know, people they can post their article or something. So this guy was debating Sam Shamoon, but in fact. Sam Shamun was not there. It was the same Muslim. He logged in as Sam Shamun. You can make two accounts. One you call it Sam Shamun, and the other one you call yourself uh, Zatari, Fatari, whatever his name. So he, he logged in as Sam Shamun and he posts something. And then he logged again, supposedly refuting Sam Shamun. But the stupid he forgot that his IP is showing. You see, maybe people who they are reading the blog, they will not notice that. But the one who controlled the blog, they can see it. It's the same IP. It's the same person. And for sure, Sam Shamun was losing. No, 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 not account hijacked. No, you make two accounts. You can go right now. And make an account in Facebook, call yourself Christian Prince. Who's going to stop you? What hijack? No, no, this uh, uh, Sam Shamu never go there. He don't even know that website. <laughs> he make two accounts. He can make a hundred account. Right? Like the Muslims, they have a challenge for me from ten years ago with challenge the Christian Prince, but they never come to me. And challenge the post an article. A challenge to crow the coward the Christian prince ZB and they never come to me. I'm here every day. I have my Skype open, I have my nobody call me. Right? A very typical behavior of the deception of Allah. Uh, SFM Imran CP and his followers let me warn you that hell vast okay uh, SFM guys look what SFM I like your aim by the way SF is SFM it look like your name is like Muhammad because Muhammad Muslim they say SWFM uh, okay uh, SFM so why we will go to hell if your Quran says that the Christians will go to heaven are you accusing your prophet of being a liar SFM you must be trying to insult the Prophet peace upon him 
isn't your prophet like Allah in the Quran said that Christians they have no fear and surely they are going to go to heaven are you there SFM so what we will do now did he uh, took the camel and left Muhammadan, is that your book? Verily, those who believe and those who are Jews and the Christians and the and by the way, why the Sabian they will go to heaven? The Sabian worship stars. But let me tell you, Muhammad at that time he he's desperate to make people believe in him as a prophet. So like I like like now, I want to say I'm prophet. Okay, you are Hindu. I believe Hindus will go to heaven. You are a Buddha. I believe Buddhas they will go to heaven. You are a Sabian. I believe Sabian will go to heaven. Just believe in me. So Muhammad at this point, he make everybody will go to heaven. Just believe in me. And nobody believe in him. But now we have this. What Muhammad can do with it? Any Muslim can answer why the Sabians, they will go to heaven? The Sabian don't believe in Allah. Oh, I forgot. They believe in Allah. Sorry. They worship stars. Any Abdul? How the Sabia and they will go to heaven? And why the Jews and the Christians they will go to heaven? And who is left is not going to heaven then? Unbelievable. What happened to this guy is uh, FM did he did he take a change did he change the uh, what they call it the channel from FM to uh, shortwave hmm. And yeah, actually, uh, nobody will go to everybody uh, will go to heaven except Muslim. This is what the Quran said. The Quran said, "Wama minkum illa wariduha." Not a single one of you, but he will enter into hell. Illa wariduha. Do we have any Abdul want to say something? Look at the first one. So it says, There is not a one of you, but shall approach it. But doesn't say that. It says, Not it's one of you, but shall enter it. Which word we use in Arabic for God? Uh, Rub. This is not Arabic, by the way. Arabic as a language does not exist. There's nothing is called Arabic. Those are Aramaic word. Ar Rab Rabbi uh, uh, Il Ilahi. All right, but not Allah. In the first translation for the Bible, they have they put the word Allah. That's a first translation. Just to they are hypocrites. They are being the same as the Muslims. When you speak about God, if you want to speak as a name. First of all, even the Bible didn't give him a name, but you can use only the words which is exist in the Hebrew. Either you call him Yahweh, or you call him Jehovah, or you call him Elohim. There's no need to translate. Those words should not even be translated. The second you are saying the word Allah, you are being deceived by the false translator. And by the way, Arabic is not a language by itself. Arabic is coming is from the Aramaic. Everything you see in the front of you, and actually there's a great, great uh, 
I don't want to say only influence of the Aramaic in the Quran, but uh, I believe strongly that Quran was not an Arabic book. It is just an Aramaic book. This is why Muslims there is there is many things in the in the Quran they cannot uh, all the names in the Quran Muslims do not know what it's mean give me one name in the Quran and let us ask the Muslim what the name mean they don't know why because it's a theft the whole religion is a theft ask a Muslim what Ishmael mean they don't know okay Mary her name is Mary what met Mary mean they don't know Maryam okay what what Isa mean they do not know okay what Israel mean they do not know Moses, they don't know. Abraham, they don't know. So what they know? Nothing. Have you ever heard of a prophet? He know nothing. Right? Why it's in Arabic because they live between the Muslims and they are being hypocrite so they use the word Allah thinking maybe that will stop the Muslims from killing them but that is a false translation do we have any Abdul Soldier of justice, yeah, right. No, the Quran is not a copy of the Bible as much as a copy of everybody. You will find that Alexander the Great is a prophet of Allah in the Quran. Alexander the Great was a bisexual. The story of the seven sleepers in the Quran, the story of seven sleepers is a fiction story. Written by a Christian bishop from Syria, Aramaic. And written actually in Aramaic. How this story end to be in the Quran? This is a fiction story. The story of Solomon speaking to the ants or listening to the ants. This is a story can be found in the book of the, Le the, G the Legion of the Jews. The story of, a, of Prophet Al Khadr, the Green. This is a legend from the old, old Aramaic people, and even in, in Persia, they believe in it. If any of you know the stories of Gilgamesh, this is how far the roots of this story goes. About a guy who go and he look for the fountain of youth. You know what I mean? Fountain of youth. This is the same you see in the Caribbean movie, right? The car the, the, the part of the Caribbean. Yeah. The same you find in Islam. They believe that there's a guy, his name is the Mr. Green. Why they call him Mr. Green? Because simply he did drunk from the water of youth. And since then he never died. Mr. Green, Al Khadr, he he was in the funeral of Noah. And then he was in the funeral of Abraham, and then he was in the in the funeral of Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> Why? Because he drank from the fountain of youth. Right? Look what this guy is saying. الدين عند الله الإسلام يا عباد الصليب أولا يا حمار نحن لا نعبد الصليب ثانيا يا حمار كيف يكون الدين عند الله الإسلام والإسلام يقول أن النصارى والذين هادوا في الجنة. Mr. Shaker he says, oh you Christians who worship this look the cross, the religion for Allah is Islam. And here again we prove that Muhammad is a liar because if only if if the religion for Allah is Islam, so how he called the Christian people of the book. Who is the donkey here if the only religion accepted for Allah is Islam so how he says that the Christians and the Jews they will go to heaven but they are not Islam then 
He did not call them Muslims. He called them Christians and he called them Jews. I think this is a Faris, the kid. Get out of here. Are there many translation of the Quran? Translation, or you mean version of the Quran? Translation, yeah, there's many translations. But there's many Quran too. Even Muhammad himself, he said, Allah, he sent me the Quran in seven, in seven, seven Quran. No, the Quran does not mention anything about Mary in such a way. Why the Quran does not remain in Aramaic? Okay, if you if you speak Arabic, you know when Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, he took over the Caliphate, he forced all books to be in Arabic. And we don't have a Quran even dated to Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. We don't have it. Nobody have it. Where is the Quran? If the Quran was in Arabic from the beginning, where is the Arabic Quran? We cannot find it. This is not the Quran of uh, Muhammad. This is not even the Quran of Uthman. This is the Quran according to recitation of Hafs. Well, who is Hafs? Hafs, according to Muslims, was a fraud and he is a liar, him and his father. Thank you, Jason. God bless. Hafs was a fraud. Hafs, even his hadith is rejected. If, if Hafs, he report a hadith, the Muslim, they reject it because he's a fraud. So how you reject his hadith, you accept his Quran. How stupid is that? It's like saying to me, Hafs, he cannot witness for, uh, for a chicken being uh, stolen, but he, he can witness for the Quran. I mean, which one is more important, chicken or the Quran? So he's rejected. To witness for a chicken, but he is accepted to witness for Allah. You know, Islam is the most silly, stupid religion or cult. But the problem is that when when people they study anything, uh, I, I don't know how to explain to you. Like you see, uh, if you have a program, it's called, it's called Microsoft Word. Or let us say we go on Google. What Google is about? You enter, you enter a word, and then you click search, and then whatever this word is written is going to come out in the search engine. It's endless, right? So, either we can be just a computer who collect information, but we do not know how to use it, and we do not know how to make the connection, or we can be a smart computer where we can collect the dots and gather them together to make an image. So always when I study, I the more information I have, the more I can make an image of the information, not just information in the shelf. So when you read anything in front of you, always you have to work to connect this information with information already you know. Otherwise, there is no benefit of learning. Right? You have always, you know, like like Islam is like a like a a rip off book, like a book ripped off, because you see the verses in the Quran they don't they don't match anything. I mean, if you read anything, you will see there's no there's no connection. The, the verse before it had nothing to do with the verse after it. So how we will understand this book? Because this is never was a book. I will give you an example. The guy who said a second ago in Arabic, the religion for Allah is only Islam. Did he say that? 
Okay. Chapter 3, verse number 19, it says, The religion for Allah is Islam. But look what this verse is saying. Chapter 5, verse number 3. You can, it's, it's haram for you to eat uh, this food, the, the, the pig food. Okay, you cannot eat pig. And you cannot eat this, brother. And you cannot eat this. And look what he says then. After all of this garbage, then he says, This day have I perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you, and chosen for you Islam as a religion. I mean, this translation is really is, who is the donkey translating this one? Eh, must be Biktal. I think Biktal he was he was translating when he was sitting in the twilight seat. This guy is a really certified donkey. Let us read again. This day have I perfected your religion for you, complete my favor upon you, and have it chosen for you Islam as your religion. But like, hold on. Today Allah perfected Islam for you. So what all those chapters after for if Islam became perfect? We have 114 chapters. This is chapter number five. And in the beginning of chapter number five, so how this verse can be accurate? Unless this is was not a book. This verse to be accurate, it should be at the end of the Quran. You know what I mean? So there is no proof that the Quran was a book. Never was a book. Even the Quran called the Christians people of the book, but he never called the Muslims people of the book, which means in the time of Muhammad, none of them have a book. Any Muslim have an answer? So when Allah he says you can eat a chicken, you can't eat pork, Islam became complete now? That's it? That's the Quran. <laughs> Have you ever heard of something stupid like this? Hey brother, you cannot eat pork. You can eat sardine, brother. And today I completed my favor upon you and chose Islam for you as a religion. <laughs> what is what what is that? That is the most stupid statement ever I heard. Guys, when Jesus said it's complete, when he said that? When he said that? He spoke in the cross, right? In the cross. Muhammad saying here it's complete. <laughs> but this is in the beginning of Islam. So it's very clear that Quran never was a book. This is just somebody collecting things we do not know where they're coming from. There's no way, it doesn't matter how stupid Muhammad is, he will say such a statement here. This is a verse must be at the end of the Quran. But anyone remember what the last thing Muhammad he did in the before he died? Who remember? What is the last thing Muhammad did before he died? P P Anyone have the reference? Who have the reference? Let us see how many of you is uh, is doing his war homework. I mean, have you ever heard of a prophet of God? The last the last word he says, "Give me the dish so I can pee in it," and he pee and he die. Uh, 
I want to pee. This this is why I was wondering why Shakespeare he said to to pee or is it to be or not to be or to pee or not to pee? That is the question. Anyone have the reference? Nobody have the reference. Uh, you guys are not. Uh, nobody is saving the reference. Me. Not even one. Seven hundred people. Not even one. The reference for Muhammad did pee before he died. I mean, how such a reference is not there? <clears throat> uh. Hmm. Like nobody have it. So what if I put you here in the front of in my place and then I say to you, okay, you debate a Muslim. How you want to grab a reference? It's going to take you 10, 10 years. I don't know. This is going to take you 10 years. <clears throat> Bukhari, hadith number 73, number 224. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh. Any Abdul? All right, guys, anything else before we go? If there's anything? I'm just trying to read the comment. Too many comments. It's hard to follow. Gonna have a Skype. Your own Abdul. I am afraid. I don't know what you mean. Um, how I can call you? Uh, Ellen, why you want to call me? We we want Muslims to call us. If you are a Christian, there's no need, my friend. Christians corrupting the Bible. That's a good question, actually. But you know, the Muslims, when they say that, the Muslims who say that, they are ignorant. You see, 99% of the Muslims, they are illiterate about Islam, not only about Christianity. Because even the Quran says that the Quran confirm what we possess. Hmm? Do you see it? Guys, yeah, do you see it? This is chapter 2, verse number 89. What it says? Yeah. Muslims are ignorant. You see, this is why their scars, they will not even get close to me because I, I can make them hummus before even they open their mouth. How you want to say to me that the Bible is corrupt and then your Quran saying that affirming what we have with us. <laughs> and there's many verses like this.
but you know all the Muslims are copy paste of each other it's like uh, it's like somebody is infected with something and he cannot repeat his own words he cannot he come with his own questions uh, if you go and watch the debate between uh, Mimi and uh, David uh, Wood you will see that Mimi is just copying a debate of uh, Didat, and he said exactly the same. This is why it became so stupid. So how the Quran confirmed the book with us, we have it, and then the Muslim they say it's corrupt. Second, secondly, if a Muslim says to you that the book, your book is corrupt. Tell him the book of Allah is corrupt. You mean the book of Allah which he gave to Isa is corrupt? The second you say that to him, he will bite his tail and he will run. Remember, the Muslims believe that the Injil and the Torah was sent by Allah. Okay, so what's my problem? A Muslim saying to me that the book of Allah is corrupt, what's my problem? Are you getting my point? Why you want to defend? Tell him, yeah, I agree. Your God, Allah, is an idiot. He cannot protect his book. And right away, he will bite his tail and he will say, oh, no, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm saying your book. He said, well, hold what my book. The Quran says this is the book of Allah. And what you are saying to me, that the book of Allah is corrupt. So what's my problem? Do you understand, guys, what I'm saying? Usually, always the Christians, when when somebody, a Muslim, said to that, that to them, they start defending, no, we have manuscript. Don't do that. Don't waste your time. He's not even listening. You know, hit him in the head, the head of Allah. Allah is the one who sent the Torah. Allah is the one who sent the Injil according to your book. And now you are saying to me that the book of Allah, the Injil, and the Torah are corrupt. So what's my problem? Why you don't go ask your God, Allah, why he don't protect his books? Who should protect the book? The one who sent the book, not me. I am a human. I die. We are not eternal. God, who is eternal, he will protect his book. Nobody else can do that. So are you saying to me that Allah was lazy and he was stupid and he was asleep and we corrupted his book? If this is true, then Allah is not God. Secondly, ask him, was the book of Allah corrupted by Allah will or against his will? What do you think, guys? Which one the Muslim will choose? If we ask him, the book of Allah, the Injil, and the book of Allah, the Torah, was it corrupted by Allah will or against his will? What you will say? If he say against his will, that's mean Allah cannot force his will. If he say by his will, that's mean he is the devil. <laughs> Either way, that's mean he is not God. Do we understand? If I have a book and you ask me, okay, Christian Prince, was this book corrupted by your will or against your will? If I say against my will and I claim to be God, that's mean my will is not what the Muslim, they say, Allah, if he wants something B, he say B is going to be. Well, is the will of Allah to corrupt this book? If yes, that's mean he is the shaitan. He is not God. If it's against his will, that's mean he cannot he cannot be God too. Because the will of God, nobody can challenge it. Well, I hope people here are listening and learning how to do to uh, I don't call uh, you know, you see, when you talk to Muslims, you are not debating Muslims. It's like you are talking to somebody is a he's a child, he's not mature. Islam as a cult is not a mature religion. It's an immature cult. Everything inside it is stupid. It's a chain of contradictions, chain of fictions, chain of stupid stories collected by who we do not know, put in a book how we do not know, and the verses are scattered everywhere and we don't know what is Muhammad talking about. As an example, 
if I ask a Christian where we can find how God created the earth and the heaven, all of you will say in the book of Genesis. Okay, if we ask a Muslim where we can find how Allah created the earth and the heaven, he cannot give you a chapter, it's all over. <laughs> it's all over. Why? Because this is, was never a book. It's a collections. You know what I mean? Anyway, all of us we learn every day, and the important is to use what we learn for what is useful. And you know, trust me, education can will change you. You see, you as a person, uh, if if you go and you sit with a group of people now, you just because you sit here and you learned a lot about Islam, and they open the topic about Islam, people are not aware they will notice that you know a lot, and you will look unique. Even though maybe you do not know much, but you will be unique between those who do not know anything. A Muslim, he used that always for his advantage. Muslims always, they get a lot of education to attack Christianity. So when they go and sit with the Western, many of the Western, they are not even Christians. They don't know anything about Christianity. Some of them, their name is James, but he have nothing to do with James. So the Muslim is well trained to attack Christianity. All his life in the mosque, they teach him how to attack Christianity. The Western person, he do not know even what Islam is about. So the Muslim will look like he knew a lot about you, but in the same time, you know nothing about him. And then the game start about how I can fool this fool. Because you will be a fool if you claim to be a Christian, but yet you do not know. That is foolish. The dawn, you are not here to attack Christianity. No problem, my friend. Attack Christianity, who care? Nobody can attack Christianity. Try. Everyone who does, he fails. Miserably. Uh, I have systematically, I have a Muslim friend. My friend, if you know, I have my books. They are, it's like a library of reference. Get my books. They are very handy. Same time, I have a lot of videos for free. I mean, like now, we are sitting for how many hours? We are doing nothing but teaching. So, in order to 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 uh, uh, to speak to Muslims, you have to know what Islam is about. You have to arm yourself so you will not be infected by the disease of the cult of Islam. It's like you know you want to have you want to work as a nurse or a doctor, but you, the first thing you working in the this field uh, should be prepared that you might get infected by the disease you are trying to cure. So what we do to fight the flu, we have something that's called the flu shot. The flu shot, the purpose of it is not to get sick. But in fact, you are getting sick by taking the flu shot. So taking, taking knowledge about Islam, which is sick, for me it's sick. But not because we are seeking sickness, but we are seeking protection. So nobody can fool us. All right? What? Uh, I thank you for all your work. Hope you can finish the Quran. Also, you mentioned you cannot find a woman to marry. Find one like what? Like beers? Since you said you are <laughs> beers, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I'm looking for a beer one. Okay, I'm going to go to the wood. No, actually, you know, it's not about uh, I cannot find. But, you know, imagine if you are married now and you have a family. How I can sit with you like now? It's, now it's uh, 10, uh, 12, mid middle of the night. My voice will be loud. People will be sleeping. 
and there's no women in the world that she can handle this it's too much stress I received death threat people want to kill me people want to find me people I mean and you have a family then that will be too much stress on them so being a single it's a lot more uh, I mean it fit what I do what I can do I mean somebody have to clean the garbage you may get married you get married and have kids have good fun have 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 a good time right what I do is not easy Uh, any reference how to find how Aisha she was pointing in Muhammad you will not find such a reference in any of the Sunni books but you will find them mostly in the Shia however you can search uh, there is a sheikh his name Yasser al-Habib he is a Shia and I believe he was from Kuwait I think uh, he have videos in English about how Aisha killed the Prophet All right. You can search for it. Okay. All right, RT. I'm good that you like it. Don't forget to make a. a if you read my books, don't forget, please, to make a, a like a, a review, and for sure you make an honest review, not just um, anything. And again, for those who, by the way, who do not know, uh, we have my book now is in Spanish. It's already published in Amazon, and we have in French, the Secret to Prophet Arab. And we have in Dutch, we have in German, and actually there's a book which is Quran and Science, which is really, I mean, this book, I'm not sure why people are not uh, reading it much, I mean, compared to the others. This book is really, really, really a treasure of information. You see, the deception of Allah was introduction for this book, not the opposite. People, they are reading the deception of Allah. And they are like uh, reading the, the deception, like maybe four times more than the Quran and science. When the Quran and science is a treasure of, it's a library of information. But for some reason, I don't know, people, they like maybe the name, the Sibyl of Allah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and soon, I hope we will have our the, the book, uh, Sex and Allah in German too. Uh, both of them ver version uh, number variant number one and variant number two um, I'm trying to read I will expose the Christianity by only one question are you ready Christian CP are you ready as well uh, him uh, you know you, you uh, already you expose the Christianity I mean you do not need to do it I mean this is embarrassing Ahem is here for three hours and now he want to expose the Christianity. <laughs> uh, there you, are. you see why sometimes I say it's good, it's good that some women they don't get married because imagine you marry a guy like this. This guy now, what he did is like marrying you for 40 years, and then when you cannot have babies no more, he says, Today we will have sex to have baby. What are you waiting for, Abdul? Until I leave? So you are here for the last three hours, posting and being stupid, and now you want to destroy Christianity by one question, and the question is not coming yet. Are you searching for it in Google? Is Google helping, brother? It's 
stupidity is amazing. There's two kind of people I don't like to associate with. Stupid and selfish. A stupid person will make me feel I want to wanna like wanna jump from the top of the mountain. A selfish person, he is devilish, satanic, because he only loves himself, worship himself. I prefer to stay away from both. If you sit with a stupid one, he will not make you smart, he will make you stupid. What you will learn from a stupid one? You will learn how to be stupid, like let us smoke hashish. Uh, let us smoke marijuana, you know, it's stupid. This is what he has. This is this is his level of life. Nothing. Empty. What empty can give? Nothing. Then the selfish. The selfish is a person who loves no one except himself. He's willing to sacrifice everybody just to make himself happy. Very evil. I can destroy Christianity by one word, Farjaha. Hmm. <laughs> what is that? All right. I think we have enough for today. I will try to come again here tomorrow, guys. Uh, and I hope we will have some Muslims who will have the courage to call us. Um, and again, our prayer for those who, the families who lost their beloved one in Sri Lanka, and we as a Christians, we are family, and we always support each other, and we love the one who always, the weak, always you have to love the weak, even if it's a Muslim. Always, my friend, defend the weak. Don't be a coward person. Coward always take advantage of the weak. Never do that. When Muhammad, he says, you can beat your wife because he is taking advantage of the weak, physically. And this is a very clear sign of a coward man who have a coward mentality. A real man will not beat a woman. You want to fight? Go and fight a man like you. You want to use your fist? Go and use it with the one who have a fist like yours. Fighting a woman or a child is a very cowardly behave. And that is the teaching of Muhammad in the Quran, chapter 4, verse number 34. He always liked to teach how to take advantage of the weak. And we are not cowards. A real man, he fight a real man. Not a kid, not a woman. A soldier, he fight a soldier, not a civilian who have nothing in his hand. Cowardly religion. I want to say thank you for being here, and I want to say thank you for all those who support us. And I hope that what we share here with you will be shared with others so many they will learn and i advise you christians not to waste too much time yes you listen to me you stay in my program for a while but please every day try to read some words of wisdom you see we are speaking about the dirt and the garbage of islam but we need something clean in our life and we cannot replace the word of Jesus with this garbage. So please always try to read at least, you know, every day. Say to yourself, I want to read every day uh, one page in the Bible, just a page. But when you read the Bible, try to live the story because this is a spiritual book, it's not just words. Be there with the Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit will be with you. I did read the Bible many, many times, and each time I read the verse, especially when I cannot like in a chat like now, 
when I'm sitting alone and quiet and trying to to see something always I find something new very beautiful never read the verse and read it again and I did not see something new even though it is the same verse maybe because the beauty about the Bible is it's a book which live with you which means you today you have different situation and the Bible today will give you an advice for your situation yesterday you have a different situation you are a living being you are emotional you get tired maybe you've been betrayed by somebody maybe you've been hurt maybe you have illness maybe you have something wrong happening around you the Bible always can be the best help the best medicine it's a medicine in your shelf but you don't want to grab it so my friend I advise you always to get the real food for your life to your brain to your heart and then the Lord he will comfort you and he promised us I will go and I will send you the comforter and every two of you mention my name I will be between them which means he is right now listening to us so don't waste that opportunity and don't just focus in the garbage of Islam a Christian who do not know his book he knew nothing a Christian who do not know Christ maybe he won the world but he lost everything don't be that I want to say thank you for being here and may the Lord bless you all and they will see you soon again Christ is Lord Islam is evil and see you soon take care bye bye